yesterday. Great ideas are only great when turned into reality. Uh, Russian uh, Prime Minister Medvedev is, uh, is a huge fan. In June of this year, we took over uh, the whole uh, Red Square in Moscow. WebGL brings groundbreaking graphical experiences to the web. Challenge today is to deliver them on whatever screen, whatever de device that you can dream of. Mm. And it's as simple and as difficult as that. The front door is finished. Well, it's much better. The front door is packed. The state is failing his role at building the nation. But fortunately, here Le Bon Coin comes in <laughs> and helps build the French uh, nation. You're not happy just sitting and reading a paper or watching uh, uh, traditional TV. You want to engage and you want to share. The most scared I think we are of the guy in a garage who's doing something that we don't know of yet. Work is not, uh, not something you will go to. It's actually something you believe in. It's a state of mind. About 30% of all three-year-olds have their own LinkedIn accounts. No, they don't. But I'm telling you, next year, when the two-year-olds are three-year-olds, they probably will, right? And we bring this ability in the palms of our hands wherever we go. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Hi and welcome back to day two of Sim Stockholm. Yesterday was magical and today the magic continues. For some reason, as holograms, we are very much in demand in morning sessions after big parties. So here I am with you today introducing a new format, a format called Pecha Kucha. And Pecha Kucha is Japanese for chit chat. Uh, it's very far from chit chat because it's really a fast-paced presentation format where you get 20 seconds per slide and only 20 slides. So we're going to see different perspectives brought to you by very interesting speakers. The first one is going to be Refugees United, who's sharing their incredible story. Then we're going to look at digital health, and then Johanna Fagrell is going to share the future of mobile with us. So please, without further ado, Pecha Kucha Sessions, take it away, Refugees United. Good morning, everybody. So I've got six minutes to, uh, to save the world. I read a really interesting article recently from a, uh, from a nurse that was working at a hospice where she over the years had recorded the biggest regrets people faced as they were facing their own death. And the one thing that kept coming back over and over and over was the fact that most people had failed to spend time with their families and getting to be with those they loved. And I'm here today to shortly tell you about a different group of people who are facing the same predicament, but through no choice of their own. Of people that have been uprooted, have had their past taken away from them, and are thrown into a future that's very uncertain. And a future that's made all the more uncertain because they have not only left any physical belongings they had and walked into a path they don't know, but they've been separated from the semblance of security they know which is family in most cases. I'm talking about the more than 45 million people who currently live as refugees, as displaced people in this world. Many of whom, during their trek away from insecurity, from regimes, from conflict, from natural disasters, have lost track of their children, of their siblings, of their parents, and so on, and find themselves walking across vast distances in search of safety, but on their own. My brother David and I founded Refugees United uh, some years ago after helping a young Afghan refugee try and track down what had happened to his seven family members after they escaped from the Taliban. And in the process, we discovered that the existing organizations were not working with any kind of IT infrastructure that connected, that collected, that curated data and information on separated family members and shared it across other organizations and across refugee camps, urban areas, and other places where we'd find a high number of displaced. So we set out to create Refugees United as a database that could harness this information, that could see to it 
that separation between parents and children, between siblings and so on, would not last for years, would not last for months, but hopefully, if we do our job well, will be brought down to last perhaps weeks or days or hours. And the common denominator in what we're doing here, the one thing that we see run through as a red thread in every place we work in the world is a mobile phone. Not a smartphone. People are not sitting in refugee camps updating to Instagram where they're having breakfast. But a $10 handset that, despite everything, is a connection to information and a connection to a world. And in our case, a connection that enables them to find their family members. Refugees United runs massive campaigns across, especially East Africa, but many other places of little infrastructure and very little information. We utilize radio to reach tens of millions of people to explain to them that if they've lost contact with family members, here's a way for them to re-engage through Refugees United and our partners. This is how we provide you free of charge access, <clears throat> excuse me, through a mobile phone through community outreach projects, through our partners with, in the Red Cross or the UNHCR, et cetera, that can assist them in connecting and collect that information, have it input and distribute it across our networks. And as I mentioned, the leverage of partnerships is what makes this possible for Refugees United. Working with the likes of Ericsson as our main partner, Vodafone, Vodacom, et cetera, and so on across uh, North, South, and Central Africa, we are able to distribute tens of millions of SMSs out to people who may have lost contact. People who are sitting in the far reaches of a jungle in Goma, which is in the eastern DRC, or sitting somewhere in northern Kenya towards the border of Somalia, and inform them, provide them with knowledge of what we do, how we do it, and how they can access our services. Low tech, low key, but incredibly efficient when you're looking at the communications infrastructures that exist in the settings that we operate in. And we've been so successful so far that we've now reached the point of helping almost a quarter of a million refugees onto the platform and helping them to find their children and find their parents. And when we succeed, um, we tend to succeed with the almost impossible. These two sisters were separated in the Congo 16 years ago. A militia attacked their family. They saw their village being burned to the ground. People were raped. Families were murdered, but two sisters escaped. And as they fled through the forest, they became separated from one another. And one of them ended up in Nairobi, where she spent the next 16 years. And last March, she came into contact with Refugees United. We assisted her in signing up, began the process of spreading information about who she was to the many members of our network. And within two weeks, an SMS, a little packet of information ticked into her phone and gave her hope, because it seemed that she found her sister. And we discovered that not only had we connected the two sisters after so many years of separation, we had also connected them in the real world insofar that both of them were living in Nairobi, five kilometers apart, and had been for 12 years. And what we discovered, what we already knew was that when you're information deprived, when you're resource deprived, Five kilometers can be 50,000. So it's our quest and our mission, and from you we need help to make sure that those 50,000 kilometers are whittled down to five minutes so we can reconnect the missing of this world. Thank you so much.